in genetics, in order to be able to correctly determine and calculate the probability values of different events and different outcomes taking place, we have to be familiar with two important rules, and these rules come from mathematics and probability. Now, rule number one, we call the product rule, and rule number two, we call the sum rule. So let's begin by defining what the product rule is. So the product rule states that the probability of two or more independent events taking place or occurring is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. And that's exactly why we call the product rule the product rule because it involves the word product. So to calculate or to use the product rule, we actually have to multiply the individual probabilities as we'll see in just a moment. Now, in order to actually fully understand what the product rule tells us, we have to define what it means for two or more events to be independent of one another. So to demonstrate the independence of events, let's actually use the following coin. So we're going to flip a coin twice. So our two events is coin flip number one and coin flip number two. Now, before I actually make the flip, what exactly is the outcome of event number one? Well, there are two possible outcomes. We either have heads or we have tails. Now, we don't actually know what the outcome will be before we actually carry that event out. So let's carry the event out. So we flip, oh, that was horrible. Let's try it again, a little bit better. Okay, so event number one was the coin flip number one. And our outcome of event number one was tails. Um, sorry, heads. Now, before we carry out event number two, we don't know what the outcome is. So it can be tails or it can be heads. Moreover, the outcome of event number one has absolutely no influence. It does not actually affect the outcome of event number two. And, that exa and that's exactly what we mean by two events being independent of one another. So two events are said to be independent of one another if the occurrence of one of the events does not actually influence or affect the occurrence of the second event. So if I make my second flip, flip number two, right, it could be heads or it could be tails, and the event number one has no bearing, no effect on event number two. So in event number one, we obtain heads. In event number two, we also obtain heads, but we could have obtained heads and tails, or tails and heads, or tails and tails, and so forth. Now, another example is having children, and this is more, uh, I guess, important uh, when we're talking about genetics. So what exactly do we mean by having two children? So having child number one is event number one, having child number two is event number two. Now the outcome of event number one could be either a girl or a boy, and the outcome of event number two could also be a girl or a boy. Because event number one is independent of event number two, what that means is the gender of the first child has no effect, no bearing, no influence on the, ch on the gender of that second child. So we can get a boy and a girl, we can get a boy and a boy, or a girl a girl, and a girl or a boy. So we can have four different possibilities, as we'll see in just a moment, and these different events, two events, are independent of one another in the same way that these two coin flips were independent of one another. So to demonstrate this a bit more, let's actually take a look at example number one and example number two. So in example number one, we want to use the product rule, this rule here, to basically determine the probability of obtaining two consecutive heads on two coin flips. So basically what that means is we have to apply the product rule. So let's use the color <coughs> black. So essentially, so we use the probability, uh, the, pro, uh, the product rule to basically determine what the probability is in flipping two consecutive heads. Now, if we flip the first time, what's the probability of that? This actually landing tails or landing heads in this case. 
Well, it's either this side or this side. So it's 50-50 and that means it, there's a one half chance that this will land up and a one half chance that this will land up. So we see that the probability of it landing heads the first time around is basically one half. So the probability of event number one taking place is one half. And likewise, the probability of independent event number two taking place, the second coin flip, coin flip is also one half. And because they're independent, to find the actual probability of these two events taking place, we have to apply the product rule. We multiply them by one another and we basically get one fourth which is equivalent to 0.25 and if we multiply by 100 we get 100% uh, 25% so remember this is 0.25 out of 1 or equivalently 25% now we can also use a Punnett square to basically calculate what the result is so in trial number one in the first event we can either get heads or we can get tails so let's use I guess red for heads or actually let's use a uh, red for event number one and let's use blue for event number two okay so this is event number one first trial event number two second trial now what's the probability of it being heads well it's basically one half so let's write one half what's the probability of being tails it's also one half. Likewise, it's one half here and it's one half here. Okay, now this is event number one and this is event number two. Now, when we combine these two H's, we basically get an H and an H that comes from here. And when we combine these H's, we have to multiply these two fractions. Why? Well, because these two events are independent. So we're basically using the product rule. So one half multiplied by one half. So one half, um, let's use one half multiplied by one half gives us one fourth. Okay, so one fourth here. And the same thing goes for each and every one of these. So this event is basically both times we have heads. This event is the first time around we get heads, the second time around we get tails. So we have an H and we have a, a T. This is a T and an H. And finally, we have a T and a T. Okay, now what about the probabilities? Well, one half times one half, so we have one half times one half gives us one fourth. And we have one half, so once again we have one fourth, and we have one fourth. And this makes sense because if we sum up these four values, it has to add up to one or 100%. So point. Uh, 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 gives us a total of 1. So notice that these probabilities are the probabilities of these events taking place. So either we get heads and heads, or we get heads and tails, or tails and heads, and tails and tails. So these are the four different prob uh, probabilities. Now example number one tells us use the product rule, which we basically just did by multiplying it, to calculate the probability that is obtained when two of those coin flips result in two heads. So this is basically this first square, so heads and heads, gives us a probability of one-fourth, which is exactly what we obtain by simply multiplying these two values. So we can either do it this way, or we can actually use the Punnett square. Now, let's move on to example number two, which involves slightly more with genetics because we're using not coin flips, but we're producing children. So, find the probability of two parents, a female and a male, producing two children who are both female. 
Now, essentially, example number two is exactly like example number one, except instead of using tails and coin flips, we're using children. So event number one is having the first child. And the, uh, the two outcomes are either a boy or a girl. So let's suppose the color red is the first event. So we have boy or we have a girl. Event number two is blue. So we have also the same type of outcome, boy or girl. Now, the probability of this taking place is one half. The probability of this taking place is also one half. Okay, and here we have one half, the same exact probability, and one half. Okay, so let's actually carry out these events. So we have a blue here and a red here. So what this event tells us is, so if they have two children and the two children are a boy and a boy, then the probability is the product of these two, so one half multiplied by one half, which is one fourth, okay? Now, what about this one? Well, we have a boy and we have a girl. So we have a boy, we have a girl, and the probability of that, of that is once again, one half times one half or one fourth. And we continue this. And in each one of these squares, we have a value of one fourth. So we have a girl and a boy here. And we have a girl and we have a girl. Okay. So this is basically our Punnett square for example number two. So we want to find the probability of two parents producing two children who are both female. And if we look at the Punnett square, the only time we have both females, both girls, is in this final square. And this gives us by the product rule, so this multiplied by this, a value of one fourth. So essentially, we take one half multiplied by one half because the probability of getting a girl the first time around is one half, and the probability of getting a girl the second time around is also one half, and so we get a value of 0.25 or one fourth, or equivalently 25%, whichever way you want to actually look at it. Okay, so now that we have the product rule, let's actually move on to the sum rule. So let's take a look at what the sum rule tells us. So the probability of two or more mutually exclusive events occurring is equal to the sum of their individual probabilities. So unlike here, here we're not going to multiply, we're going to add those probabilities up. And unlike in this event, that deals with independent events, unlike in this rule, that deals with independent events, in this rule, we deal with something called mutually exclusive rules, or mutually uh, exclusive events. So what exactly do we mean by mutually exclusive events? Well, two events are said to be mutually exclusive if one event taking place will prevent the second event from actually taking place. So two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the occurrence of one of those events prevents the other event from actually taking place. So what do we mean by that? So once again, Let's take a look at the following um, coin. So now before I actually flip the coin, what can happen? Well, two events can actually take place within this one event. So two outcomes. We either get a tails or we get a heads. And in a way, we can see those two outcomes as two mutually exclusive events. Because once this actually takes place and I get tails, then heads cannot actually take place because tails already took place. And that's what we mean by two mutually exclusive events. So flipping a coin once, we obtain heads, and obtaining heads is mutually exclusive to obtaining tails. Because either one takes place or the other takes place, both of those events in that single coin flip cannot actually take place. And in the same analogous way, having one child also creates two mutually exclusive events. So we can either get a boy and a girl, but not both, 
because that is a single process. So we either, we either get one or we get the other. So every time we have a child, usually we only produce one child, either a boy or a girl. So that's what we mean by mutually exclusive events. So let's look at example number three to demonstrate the sum rule. So if a couple has children, what is the probability that one of them is a girl and the other one is a boy? So in example number two, both of them should have been female. Now we want one girl and one boy. The question is, what exactly is the probability? So let's take a look at the following diagram, the following Punnett square to basically calculate what the probabilities are. First, we actually have to apply the product rule. So let's say this is event number one and let's suppose that we have, um, so this is our boy and girl and then we have a boy and a girl. So once again, we have a probability of one half here, a probability of one half here. Sorry if it's sloppy. So we have one half here, one half here. Now if we combine this, we get a boy and a boy 